Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for your church in this place. Thank you for letting us be here and learn about you. And thank you for every person in this room. Bless this time, bless this message, and let us understand your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read again the verse number three and said, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet because, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. This word, uh, this phrase, grow, uh, faith groweth exceedingly, I want to I wanna preach this night about a faith that groweth exceedingly. It's not a normal faith. I know uh, maybe every, every single person in the world has uh, a kind of faith or faith. But as Christians, we, have to, uh, we, need to have, we need to have a faith that groweth exceedingly. And it's not enough to have faith, but a growing faith is a faith that is bigger and stronger every day. A faith that makes us overflow with love for our brothers and is a faith that allows us to uh, move forward and do extraordinary things. The disciples in Luke chapter 17 verse uh, five, they ask uh, about faith, and and the apostle said unto the Lord, "Increase our faith." It is important not only to have faith, but a faith that is growing every day, a faith that is uh, is increasing and. In this case, in Luke chapter 17, we see the, the apostles asking for more faith. And it is important because I want to share with you what happened or what, what is the result when our faith is growing exceedingly. Not only when we have faith, but when it's growing and growing and growing, what happened? I'm not going to teach about how to uh, our faith uh, can can grow, but I want to uh, preach now about what happened or what is the result when our faith is growing, or how can we uh, check if our faith is uh, growing as uh, as we need to. Uh, to have a growing faith. And a growing faith is a faith that produces the following. Number one is a faith that produces love for, for our brothers. And when we, when we say that, maybe that sounds something uh, normal or something uh, usual, but in this case, we see the love for our brothers and sisters as a result of our growing faith. And in the same measure of our faith uh, is growing, our love for our brothers and sisters is growing too. And if you read again the verse 3 of... Uh, the first verse that we were reading, the last part says, Because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you, of every one of you, all toward each other uh, abounded. And we can see that our faith is constantly growing when we been, when we begin to love abundantly uh, by this I do not mean the simple 
act of exchanging words or shaking hands, but rather loving each other with brotherly love. You know these uh, these phrase brotherly love and it's normal it is normal to have a brotherly love with our uh, uh, with our family for example with uh, P a with uh, people who grow grew up with you since when you were uh, a little uh, a kid you, you became to have a good relationship and and to be so close with them and it's normal that we have uh, this kind of love with 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 the with the person who has the same last name than you uh, or with the person who grew up with you in the same house or uh, in the same room it, it, it is easy but what happened with the with the people who grew up in another house but is here with you in the same church and we are uh, together following God and we are running the same race what happened with with these uh, other uh, people that do not have your the same last name than you, but has the same father than you, that has the same direction than you. And when, when I'm talking about the brotherly, brotherly love, it's about the church, and we have experienced this with our family. Uh, in my family, for example, we became too close uh, as brothers and, and with my sisters because when my father passed away we we had many uh, difficult circumstances and and was better for us to be uh, so close and we were we were uh, we were too close that we didn't have we didn't have and we didn't when I grew up with my brothers and my sister we didn't have uh, something specific that I can say that I could say you cannot t touch m this because it's mine or you cannot use or wear this because it's mine I remember sometimes when I was I have I have two brothers and I remember sometimes when I was uh, coming to home and to uh, our home and one of my brother uh, was leaving to another place and and we exchanged our tennis shoes because he need mine and and he's and he said is are more comfortable to me and was normal for us because we had that relation and I don't know what can I what can I do but if I see someone doing uh, something um, bad for one of them you know you you have your brothers, you have your sisters, and you have that kind of relationship that uh, you do everything for, for, for them. But how I said before, it is easy to do whatever for the people who grew up with you in the same house or in the same family, but the kind of love and relationship that we as Christians and followers of Christ we uh, that we ha that we need to have is that we we are uh, we are in the same family in Christ we are uh, with the same we, we are here with the same purpose I'm here with the same purpose you are here with the same purpose and um, We became child of children of God, and He is our Father, and and we are in the same team. We are in the same family, and we have to have a, a brotherly love. And but the brotherly love or the love for the other people in the church 
became when our faith is growing. And when I see this in the Bible, and when I see how was the first Christians, how they were, uh, uh, how was their relationship, how was their love, I know why the, disciples, the apostles were asking for more faith, faith, and they were asking for to Jesus to increase their faith. And as a result of their faith, they have a, a abundant a, a love. And if you read in Acts, you can see how they were. Uh, some people, some some people were selling their own properties and uh, giving to the other uh, who need. And that's a result when our faith is growing and our faith is increasing. But what what uh, the brotherly love means? The brotherly the brotherly love means uh, the following: Do not do anything that could harm the other. In First Corinthians uh, sixteen fourteen and the chapter thirteen, we can see how what what happened when we when we love the the other people. We don't think badly each uh, of each of of each other. We don't we don't have envy. We don't take advantage of the other person. We support the weak. We are willing to suffer for the other if it's necessary. That means the brotherly love. And we are willing to do that for the people in our family. But we have to be willing to do that for the person who is in the other chair around you in this room because we are uh, the church, we are the children of God and we are, we are uh, in the God's family, in God's family. So we have to be willing to do that with everyone, with everybody in this room. And we have to be willing to forgive our brothers for their offenses or the evil that, that they have done to us. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and be ye kind one to another, tender heart, tender heart forgiven one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Then, uh, when we see the brotherly love and what does it mean, we see that as church, as a children of God, we have to, we need that kind of relationship, we need that kind of love, and resentment and hatred and lack of forgiveness consume our soul and make us live a miserable and bitter life. Forgiving is one of the most difficult things that we as human and Christians can face. And you know that. I have experienced that. But forgiveness set us free from uh, those chains that do not allow us to be truly happy. And whenever we have to forgive, we should ask ourselves if we deserve to be forgiven by God the Father. And when we realize that we do not deserve it, then we will be able to forgive each other. In Matthew, if you read, 
If you can read with me Matthew 6, 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. It is important that we think about if we are deserved to be forgiven by God. And we are not. Then when we know that we are not deserved to be forgiven, we will be able to forgive one another. I'm sure that sometimes someone will do something bad against you or something that you don't like or something that you uh, that is bad but we have to be willing to forgive one another but when I'm talking about brotherly love as a result of our, our faith, when our faith is growing, our brotherly love is growing too. But sometimes it seems as, as if we are in a competition with our brothers. Sometimes we strive to be the person with the previous pre 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 things, for example, the best shoes or the best clothes or or uh, trying to be better than than our brothers but and Satan is subtly entering and taking advantage in in the church but we are in the same team we don't have to be uh, trying to be better than the others because we are in the same race. We are together. And if one of our church family or and if one of our church member is uh, weak, we have to be willing to take care of him or them because that is the uh, brotherly love as a result of the faith growing, of the growing faith. But sometimes it's difficult to celebrate the victories of our uh, brothers or sisters in the church. And it is because I'm, wa I'm, wa I'm waiting to be the, the best uh, of, of the best in the group or in the church. But when we have brotherly love uh, and our faith is growing, we are uh, celebrating the victories of our uh, families, of our uh, brethren. But why, why uh, compete among ourselves, if we are in the same team, if we are in the same uh, family. But when our faith is growing and growing and growing, it's easy uh, to have brotherly love and to have a good relationship with the other people in the church and trying to uh, to <coughs> celebrate their victories or praying for for the others then I see this in, the, in, in, in that verse 
that when our faith is growing, our love for our brothers is growing too. But when our faith is not growing, because everybody outside say that they have faith. If you ask every person uh, in the world, they say they have faith. But the most people try to make bad things one each other or think bad things one each other or take advantage one each other. But when, our, but when our faith is growing, it's different. When our faith is growing, everything is different. But number two, when our faith is growing, as a result, we, we, uh, we are serving the Lord. How I said before, maybe everybody said or are uh, saying that they have faith, but are they serving God? Because when our faith is growing, we are serving God. Because serving God is not only uh, attending the church or uh, saying that I am a Christian. In First Thessalonians one nine, we see an example of the Thessalonians church. The verse 9, for they themselves chew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. I believe the true purpose to Turn from the world to God is to serve God. And we see the Thessalonians church, they turn from the idols to serve God. That is the main purpose. And when our faith is growing, our serve for God is growing too. When we have more faith, we have more service. But serving God implies the following things. Serving God implies be faithful to God and be faithful serving God. In Matthew 25, 23, we can uh, take a beautiful phrase, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But to hear from God, well done, we have to be faithful. And being faithful is not is not only when we serve God one time or when I when I want or 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 in some cases no is forever and it's always we have to be faithful serving God We have to be willing to do the, the will of God. Second Timothy 4 2.
Praise the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebook, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But this first phrase, in season, out of, out of season. We have to be willing to to do the will of God. And many times we do not understand or comprehend the will of God. It seems to make no sense or it seems as an endless road. What we should do is simply keep going or keep following. And at the end, we will realize that the best thing to do was to keep moving forward and not stay stagnant. In the end, we will understand things that we did not understand before. We have to be faithful, serving God. We have to be willing to do his will. And if our purpose in life is to serve Christ and spend our life for him, for his honor and glory, then we should learn how to serve him. And what, what our attitude in that service should be. We have to serve the Lord with joy, with gladness, in Psalm 102, we can, we can uh, learn that. And there is not reason to carry out our work with sadness because he has saved us, has made us free from the slavery of sin, is our shield and strength. He is our provider, is our Helper, he, he is all, all for us. We don't need anything else if we have God. So we have to serve him with joy and gladness. We have to serve the Lord with responsibility. But remember, when our faith is growing, our, our love for the brothers is growing too at the same time. And when our faith is growing, our uh, serve to the Lord is growing. We are more willing to serve when we have more faith. But we have to serve God, the Lord with responsibility. In James 5.12, we can learn that. And we have to to know that yes is yes and not is not. In the moment of serving God, we should Recognize that he does not want a double-minded spirit. In James 4, 8. <coughs> Journey to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinner, and purify your heart, ye double minded mind. We have to serve God with responsibility, and we have to serve God with holiness. In the verse 4 of James 4, ye adulterers, and adulterers. 
that's where it's confused me. Yeah, I know you understand better. Know ye not, know ye not the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We have to serve God with holiness. We, uh, we cannot walk arm linked with the world as we serve Christ because God is a holy God and we should serve him in holiness. Finally, we can see how our faith is growing or if our faith is growing because if my faith is growing, if your faith is growing, you, you can see that in the result of your love for your brothers and sisters and your service in the uh, your service to the Lord and I want to finish in this uh, verse, John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment. I give unto you that ye love one another as I love I, as I have loved you that ye also love one another but this is small but this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another we could obey this commandment when our faith is growing it is important to ask God to increase our faith I need that God increase my faith because if my faith increase and growth my love growth and my service to God grows too I need that. I don't know you, but he said a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And it is important to love one another but it's it it's come when our faith is growing and we have to we need to have a growing faith a faith that is growing and growing more every day every year every week we have to have more faith and as a, as as a result of our faith growing, we, we will have more love, more uh, willing to serve God. And we need that. I need that. I need to increase my faith because I need love more and I need to serve more God. And if my, if my faith is not growing, I cannot love more and I cannot serve more than I should do and um, I hope you understand and I hope that this message uh, help us to uh, increase our faith and love more and serve more
concern for you, though. The woman grew up in a different culture and certainly di different circumstances than most of you did. Most of you probably had trouble relating to the thrust of that message, to his premise, I should say. He said that when he was growing up, because he lost his dad at an early age, his family was out without the father, that they shared everything. And nothing that any of them had was their own. How many of you really say honestly that's the way it was in your household with your brothers and sisters? Can anybody really say that honestly? How many if their brother or their sister came and took their tennis shoes or their whatever else it might be, went hollering and screaming or found them and jerked it back out of their hands? All right. That's why I'm saying I think some of you are having difficulty understanding that. But I really wanted to sh make sure that this point wasn't lost. Because we also have oftentimes the same kind of challenge with our brothers and sisters in Christ. As he said, it is kind of a competition. I just don't think he realizes how much of a dramatic change it would be for most of us to go from darn near willing to kill our brothers and sisters for touching anything that we had to being willing to sell our lands or our houses or our goods or whatever else to be able to provide for our brother or sister in need. And what a testimony that would be to any other American for sure. And certainly our brothers and sisters that we grew up fighting with, fussing with, over junk, right? But by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. By this change that has happened in your life, people will turn and, and, and be alerted and say, wait a minute, is this the same guy that punched me in the nose because I borrowed his sneakers or, you know, picked up his basketball or used his mitt or rode his bike, right? To have the love of Christ that the Bible teaches us to have is probably one of the more powerful testimonies that we ought to have in the world today. And sadly, we don't. Not that we don't treat our brothers and sisters in Christ better than we did our brothers and sisters at home, unlike Wilman in his circumstances, most of us treat each other better than we do or did with our family members. Now, maybe that's not so with you, but it was so with me. The only time I had a broken bone as a young person was when I punched, punched my brother and he happened to raise his knee at the wrong time and I punched his knee instead of his nose. Now, I'm not telling you because it's funny. I'm not telling you because it's you know, a good testimony. I'm telling you because... That's the way it was. And I've spent the rest of my adult years trying to show him a different love than I ever showed him when we were young. But a brother offended is harder to be won. But therein lies an opportunity for most of us to love them like they've never been loved. To care about them like they've never been cared about. You say, well, he doesn't care about me that way. Well, if they're not a Christian, how would they even know how to do that? But if you did it to them, they'd look at you and go, what are you, nuts? What happened to you? Must have been that last time I hit you. 
right? But no, what a testimony and what an opportunity to have a testimony with our brothers and sisters in Christ. By the way, parents, do your best to raise your kids not to have that kind of behavior. And I know it's difficult in this kind of environment, um, you know, with, with some of the cartoons that they have for kids and the kids shows that they have when they get home from school and, and whatever. Um, but my, my boys came in today and all sat around. We were talking about building tree houses and how what, what's needed and how it would be done. And, you know, we were just having a grand old time scheming this up. And uh, they've been working on their tree houses for some time. And they were explaining what they were doing and all of this stuff. Of course, I can't go down there in my condition. But anyway, Wilman was brave enough to get up in there with them. So I... They must be pretty good at it. I don't know. But uh, in any case, you know, I said, boys, you need to understand something that just blesses my heart. When your uncles and I were your age, we were lashing one another, beating one another, trying to get away from one another, doing anything we could do to, you know, not be around the other person. I said, I'm so thankful to have boys that, actually want to spend time together, do projects together. Not that they never d have disagreements. They do. But that's not left uncorrected and undiscussed, right? But uh, anyway, the point is this message is a very important and powerful message. And uh, we need to pray about that. Is our faith growing exceedingly? And not, not to have a, a puffed up head or anything tonight, but just to really evaluate that. You can know and you can tell by whether your love for one another is growing exceedingly. Are you, what are you willing to do to care for one another in the body of believers? Right? And, and to, to, to certainly have a testimony or share a testimony. Someone came to me a while back and said, Pastor, I sure appreciate how people at Heartland Baptist Church get along and take care of one another, and it, it really is evident to me. And so we'll praise the Lord. We're trying to grow a family of believers. We want people to love one another and care for one another as Christ did. And um, I believe we aren't failing at that, but I certainly believe there's room for improvement. So I want to encourage you tonight to really pray about this message and what the Lord would teach you from that or about that and uh, maybe ask him for some help tonight to demonstrate that brotherly love and uh, maybe for some help to correct some of the past uh, indiscretions, failures of I didn't share love when I had the opportunity. And um, I would just say I, I very much appreciate y'all's prayers, your text messages, your phone calls, even your ribbings. I got a few of those while I was out, but <coughs> just because you loved me and cared about me, and I know that, and I appreciate it. Let's stand together tonight and have a word of prayer. We're going to take up prayer requests in a moment, but first let's see if the Lord will speak to our hearts about this message and whether we have exceeding growing faith exceedingly, whether our faith is growing exceedingly uh, or not. Father, I want to thank you for the day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this message tonight and your messenger and how, uh, how much he's worked on his English and how much he's worked to be able to preach a message in English for us. And Father, I pray that you'd bless uh, Wilman for that. I pray that you'd continue to bless uh, their family, and uh, protect them as they travel, and provide for them uh, as they uh, pursue serving you in Honduras. We ask for your blessing on this invitation tonight. Father, I pray that you'd open our eyes to our failures in the area of loving the brethren. And Father, I believe there's opportunity for encouragement tonight. If we have loved one another recently, I pray that it's a great, it would be a great encouragement to be reminded if your Holy Spirit would do that for us of of an area that we did succeed in. 
And Father, I pray that you'd help us to have exceeding growing faith. And that would be demonstrated by our exceeding growing love and our exceeding growing service for you. And we ask for your blessing and your help during this invitation time. Accomplish your will in our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. Amen.